Jones. Mass shooting right beside where I live. One person dead, um, shooter ran away, and cops are literally all over. I, I was well today. I, I just got out of my car. Um, there were multiple um, noises. I, I th at first, I thought it was fireworks going off, um, and it, it came on again and again. It would start and it would start up again. There'd be a pause. You'd hear it again. There must have been twenty or, or, or thirty altogether. Um, I, I saw people starting to run in the other direction, um, and, and we started moving away. Um, on the cement uh, sitting there, you know, by the by the fountain, and I stayed there, you know, and everybody was falling down and running and I turned around and I just saw him execute a lady black you know because a, a lady tried to run and she fell by the tree um, and he went boom 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 three times and then he, he went across the street kept shooting and then walked down Danforth but uh, the owners of uh, Leonidas you know the uh, just come on down to the basement, you know, the, they pulled us uh, down the basement. I was trying to call 911, but the, the line was blocked. And uh, then they called me back and they said, and I said, listen, there's been multiple injuries and shootings. Send somebody. It was horrible. Like, uh, we don't expect this on Danforth, you know, in mean, all places. But the guy seemed to be, he had his, this look on his face, you know, when well, I saw his profile, right? Like he was screaming at something and shooting. Uh, like uh, he was in a mock state, you know. You, was trying can you hear what he was saying? No, because everybody was screaming, you know, and running away. And I fell down and I couldn't... Uh, I stayed there. You know, and next thing I hear, he shooting across the street. You know, he, he just moved on to the south side of Danforth. And, shooting randomly to kill as many people as possible and my friend said he even saw him when he changed uh, the um, clip you know because he ran out of the uh, he emptied the first clip gunshots and put in the lots of gunshots that's about all i heard and then i saw how many it, shots would it. you say how many i would say i heard at least 20 shots right in in, in intervals you know clip being spent Reloading, clipping, spent, reloading, clipping, spent. That's what I heard. And then I saw the carnage as I ran down the street here to kind of follow the gunfire, I guess. There was an exchange of gunfire, and, and I can tell you right now that as a result of this, uh, approximately um, 15 people um, have been uh, hit with uh, gunfire. Uh, 14 um, are um, not uh let me take that back. There are 15 in total. One is the alleged suspect. Uh, the other 14 are victims. I can tell you that one has succumbed to their injuries at this point in time. Uh, a young girl is in critical state right now, and the other 13 are in hospital and being treated. No, we have, uh, other than the shooter, we have a, a young lady that has that is deceased right now. Um, and we have a, a, a young girl, I believe eight or nine years old, that, that is in critical.
So if I'm going to talk about anyone that was struck with a bullet projectile in total, 16. Um, two people are, have succumbed to the injuries, um, leaving 13 who have been shot, they're in a hospital, and the suspect also has a uh, uh, gunshot uh, injury. Uh, the, the suspect has received a gunshot wound, and I have not expanded on that, nor will I. Um, but having had knowledge of, of dealing with homicide investigations, it doesn't move that quick, because at the end of the day, um, we have to be able to articulate a lot of questions that need to be answered. And the moment you start closing things early, um, then, then you, you put the investigation in compromise. So absolutely everything is open right now, and which is why I'm doing this appeal, because uh, we'll never stop. And, and a lot of people think that we'll have to too much information because it was in such a busy area you know everyone's going to kind of go well someone else is going to call and and we get that quite a bit so i'm here a second time because that is what's most important to us right now i know that there are people that have just a snippet but that snippet adds to the seamless picture that we're trying to draw here and and, and that's what's most important right now a bit loaded on that part but here's here, here's what i will say i live in the city of toronto and i too have concerns um, I can tell you that um, there is a newness to this in, in Toronto's environment. Other large cities across the world go through this uh, tremendously uh, uh, more than we have. I, I think that um, we have to figure out uh, what we can do collectively. It's going to take time. There is no magic pill that we're going to take to say all is well. Um, but I can tell you from uh, keeping the city safe, uh, I have, I think, the highest, highest trained officers in the country that will do their best to make sure that over time, uh, people will uh, climatize, uh, working with community, working with our BIAs, uh, working with all levels of government. And I can tell you in, in this particular instance, all layers of government have contacted me. All layers of government have uh, asked what can they do to help. And so we're in the process of having those conversations. Um, but it's not going to happen overnight. So I'm not going to say that, you know, I'm here and I'm standing and all is well and we can all go home now. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that it is going to take time. Um, rest assured that uh, we will do everything that we can do to restore that uh, comfort that, that people should have in the city of Toronto. Um, but it is a newness for us and it's going to take a while and we have to work collectively to figure out what we can do as a police agency to help restore what needs to be restored on that, um, on that factor. I am the lead, but I do have a, uh, a large group of officers that are assisting me. It's really hard to compare one incident to another because much like snowflakes, no two are the same. It was a very uh, rapid and fluid incident, as uh, Chief Saunders had said, that, uh, that unfolded very quickly. Uh, we have several scenes within the scene. Uh, I can't get into the full details, but it was, a, it was a moving scene, if you will. So it started in a certain location, then it moved down the road. So our forensic officers have a number of different scenes within the scenes that they got to concentrate on. But that being said, um, obviously, um, it can be described, as, as Chief Saunders probably said, as, as disturbing, but by the same token, uh, there were a lot of citizens in the area that, uh, when, when assistance was needed, uh, provided medical assistance to the best of their ability. Emergency services were on there very quickly, Toronto Fire, uh, ambulance services, and uh, I, I would say that for the, uh, the grace of, of emergency services right now, we're very fortunate that medical intervention happened uh, very quickly. There are some individuals that have uh, what may be described as uh, life-changing injuries, but uh, as far as comparing it to one or the other, it, it certainly is a, a very disturbing incident. Again, I, I don't want to qualify it as the worst or not the worst. It is an incident that has occurred in the city of Toronto. We are dealing with it, we are investigating it, and we are coming together, and, and we will do what needs to be done to make sure that there's a positive outcome. The 18-year-old is from Toronto, the 10-year-old is from the GTA area, so nearby. Some are in serious, I, I don't want to get into this many are suffering from this. Some have been treated and will be released in short other order, others will have to stay for a while. Uh, some, as I said, may have life-changing uh, injuries or life-altering injuries. Uh, it was a very, very, very quick dynamic incident that occurred, very short order uh, from start to finish. I don't want to give a time frame, but it was very, very quick. As I said, emergency services were on there in short order, and we do have a number of different scenes that we are now focusing on. Uh, that being said, part of the investigation includes a canvas, and I think sometimes people don't understand how important the canvas is. So we will have uniform officers canvassing the immediate area, both north and south, uh, of Danforth in the immediate location. So if they knock on your door, 
or if you get a, a piece of paper that says, uh, you know, you weren't here, please contact us, please contact us. There are so many unknown uh, answers to questions that we have right now that we have to try and answer to the best of our ability. But most importantly, and lastly, I cannot comment on this very much because the SIU has invoked their mandate. That being said, we have a duty to make sure that we conduct a complete investigation to make sure that we have as many answers as possible, number one, and to find out whether in fact there may or may not be other people involved. Again, I can't speak to what was in this individual's mind. We'll, we'll, we'll certainly dissect everything. We're going into the background of this individual. I can tell you right now that as we speak, we are seeking judicial authorization to execute a search warrant in relation to the person that's now been arrested. I can't get into what may or may not come of that, but that's one of the things we're getting right now is authorization to search the residence. Well, I don't want to sound glib, but when someone says how brazen is this, I think that's a quasi rhetorical question. I think all of us as members of this community are shocked and alarmed and should be that this has occurred. That being said, the, ch the chief is, is quite proper in what he stated. You know, we, we have control of the city. This is an incident that has occurred. It's a tragic incident. There are many, many, many moving parts and victims to this incident, but we will get through this. But what we need right now, we need the assistance of anyone that lived in the area that may have any video that we don't have so far, if you can upload it. And if you heard or saw anything in relation to this incident around 10 o'clock last night, don't assume that we already have that information because we're going to need that information to complete our investigation. Now, I'm not sure what the role is of the SIU with regards to releasing this individual's name. I can't do that. I'm not allowed to do that, and so I won't do that. That being said, we are going to look into the background of that individual. I'm quite certain that there will, there will be a frenzy on social media about speculation about who this person is and what they belong to. I ask you to be cautious. We're at the very, very early stages, and we will conduct a thorough and complete investigation. So I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your attendance, but there's not a whole lot more I can comment on this active investigation. Why does anyone in this city need to have a gun at all? And I know even answering that question won't fully eliminate tragedies like this, but even if we can prevent one of these incidents, then in my view, it is a, a discussion worth having. They told me last night uh, that uh, they would, or early this morning, that they would be here for Toronto, and they're here for Toronto today, and I think we can begin discussions and begin doing what people, I think, want to see us do, which is to support the chief and his uh, men and women and to, uh, to do whatever we can to keep the city safe. So that's what we're here to talk about, and I welcome them. And I don't know if uh, Premier and Mr. Chief want to say a word. Uh, sure, I, I just want to say our, our prayers and thoughts go out to the, the families, the victims. Uh, I know all three levels of government are going to work closely together. I want to thank the minister for coming down uh, from Ottawa on such short notice and the mayor for organizing uh, this and then the chief. I mean, an incredible job. Uh, not only the chief, all the frontline uh, first responders, we, we want to thank you. And uh, that's all I have to say right now. Uh, I obviously echo what has been, been, been said. We stand united. All three levels of the government stand united. Uh, with the, behind our first responders and the city of Toronto, the safety of our citizens is our highest responsibility. Um, we all know that the only way that that can be achieved is together. And so we are here to, to bring um, all the support and resource that is required to keep Toronto a great, safe and livable city. And, uh, and again, I, we've had these types of tragic incidents that have happened in the past in our city, and I'm always I'm very proud of the resiliency of the people of Toronto but it does require our best effort, and that's what we're here for. I'll just speak from the law enforcement lens, um, other than what I've provided uh, earlier in the day today. Just on top of that, we're logistically looking at what we can do to reduce the footprint of the uh, existing scene that we have right now, and hopefully I'll have an answer within an hour or so as to what that will look like. Um, I like the opportunity that, uh, as everyone has said, that we do have all layers of government here uh, to help support, to figure out what we can do, just, just not from a city perspective, but from a national uh, perspective as well, too. And I, I think that this is a, an excellent opportunity for all of us to figure out what things that we can do based on uh, today's world, today's environment, and what we need to do to, to move forward with that. So I look forward to uh, uh, figuring out what challenges lie ahead and how we can help each other to move forward. Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone.
while we still have some freedom, brother.